again, you sick, twisted weather freaks, and welcome to another fun-filled, action-packed, and intellectually stimulating edition of This Week in Weather. I'm your host and meteorologist, DT, from Weather Risk, your captain of chaos, your colonel of confusion, your commander of catastrophe. Let's talk about This Week in Weather, and a lot to talk about here, so let's get right to it. We'll start out taking a look at the um, El Nino here, what's going on, and we'll see that uh, conditions actually remain pretty stable. Um, obviously, 1.2, region off of Peru, that's the warmest area, but the rest of the regions have not really changed much. And you can see, uh, these, here's the Australians, and this is the CPC. They haven't changed much at all. They've been very stable. And uh, um, now I continue to see a lot of talk in the media, these news stories about a super El Nino coming, and I just don't know where that's coming from. Clearly, that is not the case. Uh, we are in a strong El Nino, but we're not in a super strong El Nino. That's, you know, in order to do that, you have to reach a certain level of warmth here. Remember, the critical region is 3.4. That's the area in the block in the, in the black here, in the box right area. That's the critical area right here. So if we look at the different models, here's the CFS from Friday, or uh, actually from Wednesday. The Friday one shows the same thing. The green line is 2.0 centigrade. So anything above that is super El Nino. But you can see we don't get there. And actually, the model actually has a little dip right here in November, which is what we're experiencing right now, a little leveling off. Then a slight rise to like 1.8 centigrade, and then it drops off pretty rapidly. Here's the latest from the MMEP folks. And you can see here's, I got eight different uh, climate models here. Actually, uh, seven, I should say. The only one which is, has it going above two degrees centigrade is the GFDL climate model, which is a piece of crap. The rest of them are, uh, are all showing, uh, it clearly doesn't get close. The mean is right here, 1.8, and then it drops down. The only model which has it going to Super El Nino is the European, which came out November 6th. It goes to plus Wait, maybe 2.1, maybe 2.2 centigrade in January. That's the only model that has that, and I think it's wrong. And the other reason I think it's wrong is because, as you can see, this leveling off here, the European does not have. It's not showing it at all. There's no leveling off here in November. Uh, and to show you what I mean, all right, this is the last 15 days, okay? And we are trading on the 15-day mean in a range between 1.56 and 1.73. That's where we're going, we're swinging back and forth between there. If anything, as you can see from the graph, it's actually declining now. Now, I'm not going to make a big deal. I'm not going to say the El Nino has peaked. It's, I don't believe that for a second, but it certainly has plateaued. And the problem is the European doesn't have this plateau at all. And uh, that's a problem. So uh, to me, this is telling me the European is wrong. It, it's it, in that trend. It, it's too warm, too fast, and it doesn't show the plateauing here, leveling off. If we look at the sea surface temperatures, we can see around the globe four key areas, the IOD in the Indian Ocean. Notice how warm the western half of the Indian Ocean is. And for those of you that don't know where the Indian Ocean is, shame on you. Please do not vote. Uh, but if you don't need to know, there's the Indian Ocean is here in black. This is the western half. You see how warm it is, the cold here. This is a classic positive IOD. This is the uh, El Nino here. This is the PMM, the negative PMM, the cold water here, which is suppressing or interfering with the El Nino. And this area D represents building warm water in the Northeast Pacific and a possible flip in the PDO, the Pacific Decade Oscillation. So here in the Pacific Decade Oscillation, we can see the trend. Oops, to call up the marker again, didn't do that for some reason, you can see. Now, as you can see, since November 22nd, all the way through recently, it's been constantly negative, all right? So when the PDO is negative, and when you have a negative PMM, and a negative and a La Nina, which is cold water, you have this huge tendency to keep a monster trough in the western U.S. and a strong ridge in the eastern U.S. That's exactly what happened last winter. We had all the snow and all the cold in California and Oregon and Washington and the Rockies and to uh, southwest Canada, and then nothing east of the Mississippi River. It was a blowtorch with no snow. We had a negative P PDO last winter here. We had the negative PMM and the La Nina. Those three things screw the eastern United States big time. And it was obvious. Okay. Now that's changing. This is going to neutral. Okay. The PMM is still there. Okay. But now, okay, what this means is if this goes to neutral, even positive, you're going to get a PNA positive ridge here, a ridge in the western Canada during the heart of the winter, which changes things for the winter long term. So uh, this is a really significant development if this holds. Not right away, but longer term, okay? Now, what does the PMM do? Well, okay. The PMM, Pacific Meridional Mode, is relatively recent discovery, climate science. The PMM is a subtropical region in the northern Pacific off the coast of Baja, California. So when the PMM consists of 
sea surface temperatures that show a large pool of cold water below normal, SSTAs, the PMM is in the cold and negative phase. Like we can see here, that's what it is. Right there in the green, okay? Now, sometimes the PMM runs in the warm phase, but that's not what it's have right now. So, and that, that changes things also. That could enhance the El Nino if that happens. So, the fact that the P, now, if we had that, okay, here, and we had the El Nino, we have a really good chance of getting a, a super El Nino. But we don't have that. That's not what's going on. And you can clearly see that. That is that, that we are in a negative PMM. I mean, if you can't see it, you're blind. So we are in the negative PMM here. There's the El Nino. And what it does is interferes with it. It definitely suppresses it in some capacity. And we can see that interference showing up here in the MEIs. Now, again, the MEI, in case you don't know, it's five different ways of looking at the El Nino besides the sea surface temperatures. It's ocean, sea surface temperatures, it's wind, it's clouds, precipitation, and uh, convection, all right, in the El Nino regions. So, uh, again, these are just five more recent El Ninos. Super strong El Nino, 82-83. Super strong El Nino, 97-98. Super strong El Nino, 2015-16. Strong El Nino, 86-87. Strong El Nino, 91-92, all right? Now, look where the gray line is. This is where we are right now, 2023. If anything, we dropped here in the value for October, which came out November 5, showed a drop from 0 0.6 to 0 0.3. This was completely unexpected. And I, all, the, there are a lot of there are meteorologists out there who are saying, okay, the MEI doesn't mean that much. It's going to catch up. Okay, it's a little delayed, but it's going to catch up. Okay, fine. That's your argument. But then it dropped. That's not a good argument. This is unexpected. And this is telling me that the MEI is saying there's something wrong with this El Nino. Okay, I'm not discounting the El Nino. I'm not saying it's not going to happen, anything like that. It's just not functioning normally. Something's wrong with this El Nino. Okay, this should not have happened. This drop should not have happened. This is a big surprise. All right. The other thing that happens is here is uh, what's going on with the uh, MJO. Okay, now this is the MJO and the IOD. So this, the, I, we talked about that, the Indian Ocean Dipole. So let me go to point here. You can see what I'm talking about. This is to October... 10th to 19th, 20th to 23rd, 30th, November 8th. This is just to give you a sample of what's going on here, all right? Heavy, the, the dark red area is convection, intense thunderstorms stuck in the Indian Ocean. Why? Because the Indian Ocean is so darn warm. That's why. That's what the positive Indian Ocean dipole does, okay? The problem is that when the oh, convection is in the ocean, it keeps the MJO stuck in phase eight and phase one. This is 40 days of the MJO. Look at stuck in phase eight and phase one neutral. Phase eight, phase one neutral. See what it's doing? It can't get out of this loop. It's stuck in this loop. See that? Okay. The problem is that in November, when you are in phase one, it's a very wet pattern, but it's a mild pattern on the East Coast and the Southeastern states. It's a cold pattern, early winter for California, the West Coast, the mountains, uh, the Rockies, the Upper Plains, it's a terrible pattern for the East Coast uh, and the Southeastern states in November. Now, later on in the year, phase one is not bad, but for November, it's not good. So the point here is as long as we keep getting this big convection and the Indian Ocean stays positive because it's warm, the MJO is not going to get a chance to move, in which case we're going to be stuck in a mild pattern. Okay? Now, the good news longer term is that the IOD is going to break down. Here you have eight different climate models and the ensemble mean. And we can clearly see there's the ensemble mean, the thick dark blue line. There it is. It's all, this is now November. Here's December. It is clearly weakening in December. And it drops off quite rapidly after that. That means that, the, uh, that this problem we have is going to break down. And we'll get back to a normal MJO and a more normal winter. But first, we have to get the IOD to die or weaken. Now, that's going to happen over the next 30 days. It's already starting to happen in some areas. Uh, so that's important to see. Now, if for any reason the IOD decides, no, this data is wrong and we're going to stay warm, that's going to screw up the winter. So this is a big deal. We have to get that IOD to weaken. All right. Here's what's going on in recent conditions. We don't, you know, it's been mild. Uh, trough, ridge, trough, ridge, trough. Very progressive pattern. No blocking of the high latitudes at all. And the pattern is quite mild with the Pacific air overrunning most of the country. The rainfall has been pretty light, only in the southern states. Um, so there's that. And obviously the folks here in the Mid-Atlantic and the dryness are really complaining about the lack of rain, and it is a problem. Um, it's not a disaster yet, but it is a, dry, it is a dry pattern. All right, over the next week, 
Uh, this massive trough forms in the Pacific, Eastern Pacific here. You can see it right here, right? That causes the ridge to form in the Rockies of the Plain States and the trough in New England. So you get a little cool air, but the plains, the Midwest, still quite mild. Now, as we go to week two, this is November 16th, 17th, we get this a trough coming in across the Great Lakes will bring some cold air behind it. This upper low coming out of Baja California is going to bring a lot of rain to Texas and the Gulf Coast states. Okay, and they actually need it. They're kind of in a drought area there. So this upper low is going to be very nice for those areas. And we're getting some blocking trying to form in Greenland. I don't know it's significant. The real problem here in this pattern is this gigantic upper low in Alaska. See this feature? This is the kiss of death for winters on the East Coast. If, but again, this is November. I don't really care about November. For me, November, the point is to get Canada cold and a lot of snow. So this huge upper low moving into Alaska and Western Canada is great for these areas, but it's not good if you want an early winter in the Eastern US. But I don't care about early winter in the Eastern US and neither should you. Okay, it's a waste of time, a waste of cold and a waste of snow. All right. If you look at our surface maps, so we have a big high coming down next week to reinforcing the seasonally cold air we have over the Eastern US now. There's the rain along the Gulf Coast. And then on the right hand side, this uh, system here, right here, the upper, the trough coming through, right on November 6, 16th, 17th. That's this system here, November 17th, moves through the Great Lakes, uh, mild air ahead of it uh, in the Mid Atlantic and New England, the southeastern states. Then the cold front comes through and we turn chilly again next weekend. Okay. So overall, you can see over the next seven days, the only place that stays normal is New England and the Mid Atlantic. Everybody else is pretty mild. Southeast states, uh, not too bad. Okay, but the plains and Midwest are, say, very mild. Rainfall the next seven days, well, again, right along the southern states, where the upper low moves through for across northern Mexico, Texas, the Gulf Coast, um, where it should be, and that's where the rain's going to fall. But outside of that, nobody gets rain next week. All right. Longer term, uh, we, in week two, eventually what happens is this big trough that was in the eastern Pacific, uh, that is going to uh, move. Whoops. That's not what I want to do here. Um, that is going to uh, uh, move uh, eastward. And um, let's see here. Where is she? Go back to that. Nope. Okay. So we're going to get this big uh, trough here that comes eastward into the plains of the Midwest. You're going to get rain out of this feature. Uh, there's no doubt about that. Uh, and as it moves eastward, a lot of Gulf of Mexico is going to be open for moisture. So there's a lot of rain coming with it. Now, the time we get to Thanksgiving, this is, Jan this is November 24, the day after Thanksgiving. Um, so you can see here. Uh, that uh, we have a big trough in the eastern United States, but we're getting some ridging in Alaska, Northeast Pacific. So we're getting some flow of cold air coming out of Canada into the Great Lakes in New England. Not a lot, but some. So it looks pretty seasonal or slightly above normal for Thanksgiving, Thanksgiving weekend, once the cold front comes through at the, for the end of the month. That's really what it looks like here. And again, if, here's, the, here's that trough from the cold front. This is November uh, 20th, 19th and 20th, the big rains in the mid plains, the Midwest, the Delta region, moving into the Ohio Valley. And here it is, November 22nd. The GFS is, is pretty slow with the front as well. And again, east of the front, it's really mild, okay, with the south winds bringing up the warm air from the Gulf of Mexico. But it also means a lot of moisture. So this front, whether it comes in slow or fast, is going to have a lot of moisture with it. And it's going to, it's, you know, going into Thanksgiving, uh, probably before Thanksgiving, I would think, uh, but it might cause some travel problems if you're flying through the Midwest. Um, but we'll know more, more about that uh, uh, by uh, Sunday or Monday, I think. We should have a better idea. And then week two, the, well, here's the temperatures. It's mild everywhere, as you can see. This takes us all next week here. Um, you can see that. And then um, uh, this is the rainfall here in week two. So, you know, everybody's pretty wet, as you can see, with that slow-moving cold front. And then we go beyond that. I would just look at week three. Uh, this takes us to last of November into early December. There is some ridging in, in the northern jet stream in Alaska, northwest Canada, which is, introduces some cold air southward, but this is not a great pattern. Um, it's a very, you know, a lot of Pacific oriented pattern. We can see the Pacific jet here is very strong, dominating right through here, very strong. So we're getting these low, low, low pressure coming across. This isn't cold enough to produce any sort of snowfall, I don't think. Uh, maybe for the Great Lakes in northern New England, maybe the mountains of the northern Appalachians, but that's about it. Um, so it's not a blowtorch like we saw last December, but it's not great. It's okay. It's nothing to write home to mom about. It's, you know, it's a very ordinary early December weather pattern here. And then as we go even beyond that, 
uh, just to let you know, you know, in December, uh, in, in El Nino, uh, we are in a strong, oops, did it again. We are in a strong El Nino. And um, so we're going to go from here to here. And we can see, let me cut my mark off here and use it, this one. There we go. And then we can see here, we have a, a warm, this is neutral, weak, moderate El Nino. Notice the big differences here. Um, weak, obviously, El Nino, we're quite cold, and it's, it's a good December. It's pretty stormy. It's, it's got a lot of potential, but we are not in that. We are definitely a strong El Nino. There's no doubt about it, and we're going to stay that way for all December. So we, everybody's quite mild. Just accept it. This is what's going to happen. There's no doubt about it. Um, so there might be some minor variations to it, but generally mild. Now, again, once the IOD breaks down, the pattern's going to change, and we'll have a much more active winter in January, February, March, and the El Nino will begin to weakening as well. So we have a lot of things going for us in January, February, and March. So do not be discouraged by December. Again, this should not be a surprise that we're going to have a fairly mild December. Will it be this warm? That I don't know, but it's going to be a pretty mild December. There's no doubt about that. So just keep that in mind. This is Meteorologist DT from Weather Risk. I will see you over on the Twitter page, on the website, and over on the Facebook page.